Uh, welcome everyone back to game two of this best of three between Microsoft One and Capital One Blue. But Capital One Blue is on the blue side this time, and Microsoft One, they are on the red side. Yeah, actually color coordinating ourselves this time around, so it's a little bit easier for you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Capital One Blue on the red side. They're uh, going really hard. Capital One Blue on the red side. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so these picks have changed a bit um this time we see the azir on the side of capital one blue they don't um they they've learned the power of brosef's azir and they are definitely fearing it right now though the yeah, god definite respect ban yeah and it looks as though even is just not happy on the maokai so instead he bans it for himself he doesn't want his team to force him on that champion but then insta locks the thresh and now the rengar onto um Yururu. Now we saw a Rengar previously. I believe it was Dio Diesel. It didn't really it, it wasn't really impactful that game. Let's see if Yururu can show Dio Diesel how to play this champion. <laughs> oh, shots fired. Amen. Yeah, we'll see. I mean that that last Rengar that we're referring to uh, in the previous game, go ahead and check them out on either of our two channels. Um they, uh, it was a glass cannon Rengar that went pure damage, and the question really becomes, you know, do you go for that sort of all-in style of Rengar, or especially if you do initially start going out for that Rengar, that Rengar ended up falling behind in kills, so at what point do you abandon the all-in glass cannon style and just switch to going raw tank to try and, like, still have some utility for your team to be able to dive in and start off an engagement? Yeah, and so far, um, we can talk about these other picks. Vladimir vain so capital one blue really looking for the late game this time but likewise microsoft they're gonna try and race them to there this is just gonna be two huge late game compositions clashing together and it's i think this game is gonna rely a lot on who gets um the better engage off it's obviously gonna be capital one blue because their team composition just allows so much better engage I feel as though Microsoft One, they're going to rely a little bit more on getting picks and then turning the picks into the team fight. Absolutely. If they can, you know, I'm actually surprised to see uh, um, Rengar in this composition as opposed to a Gragas. Gragas feels like it would uh, meld much better with this uh, composition that, as you said, is oriented on creating an initial pick of an engagement. Rengar, of course, can certainly do that if there is any sort of uh, mispositioning there. He can, of course, just jump right onto a squishy and uh, immediately annihilate them. But with that Lulu, uh, she's going to be able to shield up whoever he hops onto. Uh, especially if it is a vein, she'll be able to tumble away as well as long as she isn't locked down by that net. So we'll have to keep a close eye on how this turns out. Yeah. I'm kind of sure. Do you know when the Rengar was actually selected? Was it first or was it later on? <laughs> I feel That's like, a good question. Yeah, I feel stream, like... Was, stream! <laughs> you were there with us. Stream! I oh, need man. you guys to I tell was, me. I was I was too preoccupied <laughs> telling my life story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I, also... I'm also yeah. interested in seeing if uh, the red side anticipated that it is in fact going to be a Lulu mid Vlad top. That is something that could be flexed back. Yeah, that forth. is true. I mean, with the Vladimir having the teleport, it does make me think that it is going to be a Vladimir in the top lane. Um... It's not uncommon to see Vladimir in the mid lane, but they usually don't run teleport. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we as the casters, of course, saw beforehand with uh, these summer spells available that that is going to be Vladimir top, but uh, certainly might be playing a little bit of mind games in the uh, heads here of the uh, red side team. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel as though the... the yeah, the Vladimir may have been the right choice to send against uh, the Hecarim because for Cassiopeia you really just want to sh just deny her as much as possible uh, to slow down that late game power spike that she's going to be hitting and the best person for that would be the Lulu yeah absolutely and you know another pick that I'm uh, curious about is that Caitlyn pick she's of course going to be able to uh, dish out a lot of consistent damage but with a team that is so oriented on really punishing positional errors i'm actually surprised to see the sivir not being locked up for this team uh, not only of course for that synergy with the hecarim but 
uh, allowing Cassiopeia to get in better positions for her ultimate, allowing Rengar to find picks and create team fights uh, that are immediately one-sided. Oh. Uh, Kaylin is a bit more of a traditional pickup for a sustained team fight, so we'll see how that blends into this composition. So I just realized that we never used our webcams. I'm dressed up for no reason. <laughs> Oh man, it's okay. I'm preparing myself for further um, pursuits. <laughs> oh man! All right, so you know we we we've been talking a lot, but we've just neglected the chat so far. Who do you guys think is going to win this match? Is it going to be Capital One Blue on Blue Team or Microsoft One on Red Team? Yeah, are we going to see a Game 5 or not? What, what do you guys think? Is this going to Game 3 or are we going to see... You said uh, Game Microsoft 5. One? Excuse me, Game 3, yeah. That'd be insane. Oh my god. I, I don't think that I have any... That would be pretty sweet. I don't think I have anything. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't eaten anything since... Well, um, I guess... For you, it'd be like 11 o'clock. <laughs> I haven't eaten anything since wow. 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a bit of... Wow. <laughs> How you going, man? Desi, you're a machine, <laughs> dude. Man, I, I've it's been, like I don't know. I'm, I I I don't want to say I'm used to it, but like I always I don't like, I don't eat a lot actually. To be honest, I don't. Um, it's more that I'm trying to lose weight. But like I know people say like oh you're like you're not supposed to not eat anything when you're trying to lose weight. But like I watch what I eat, and my uncle like had fried chicken, so like I didn't want that. <laughs> So I blame my uncle for my starvation. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, with this uh, bot lane up here on the top side to start out, we might see a lane swap coming out. Be interested to see if Hecarim does opt to start a camp here, uh, so he'll have a little bit more time to react. Does cleanse, cleanse ignite. It cleanses the grievous wounds, but not the dot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fried chicken. I mean, what does cleanse really mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, fried chicken is delicious, and yes, it is unhealthy. That's why I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So no, no level ones. Um, again this game um they do set a pretty defensive line of wards capital one just want to prevent uh, microsoft from engaging in their jungle forgot the overlay right there there you go and we will see hecarim starting uh at those razor beaks so he will get an early level two here uh, and be able to realize that there is a lane spot going on so he'll be able to join Rengar in that jungle should he so choose to double jungle so uh, that'll definitely be good for him a lot more time to react to this Vladimir already showing himself in the bottom lane so they'll know plenty of time uh, to figure out how they want to respond to this. yeah and I think this is smart by Capital One putting the Hecarim in the 2v1 it's already going to be a disadvantage um, it's already going to be uh, pretty tough for him, but then when you have the Vladimir as well in the bottom lane who has got a really easy time in the 2v1 It's kind of it's kind of like, it's kind of like the icing on the cake like you you win that top lane But you also win the bottom lane as well yeah, And you know we I want to point out as well right now the red blood red buff being taken by Sejuani It doesn't look like they're aware that Sejuani is in that jungle. They should be doing a counter invade right now Janna Gonna be stepping forward to throw down a ward, and they will have guessed it at this point. So Rengar gonna go right over to that uh, mirrored side, mirrored jungle side with the red buff. And Ibe gonna be finally in that top lane just to soak up some experience. Gonna fall a little bit behind in CS, but that's kind of to be expected in the two v one matchup. And there is the. Um, Sorry, bleh, sorry. There's the invade by Yururu and Silent J taking away the red buff, like you said before. Yeah, Nothing. Absolutely. Not gonna let that triple buff get away. Yeah. <laughs> gonna make sure they fight that off. 
Yeah, and you know, one of the nice things about the Hecarim is that he's able to take the side camps um, pretty easily, even without the smite. So even in the 2v1 situation, he can get some form of income and experience from those Krugs. But they're all oh not a flash forward. Yeah, Brosef really going in hard. Not enough poison to continue putting down the damage, but it's still going to be forcing away Agrius in that mid lane. Meanwhile, that yeah, did, top did lane force tower. The return flash. Yeah, meanwhile, the top lane tower taking a lot of damage. This is, I think, it's going to be a, a game of who takes the tower down first. And so far, Hydroxy and Solid and J. A little bit ahead right now. The uh, Caitlyn gonna have an easier time clearing out the wave, and Vladimir not. Vladimir doesn't really have a lot of consi strong wave clear until a couple of levels into Tides of Blood. Yeah, absolutely. Gonna be able to uh, sustain through most of the rest, but not gonna be able to effectively secure that CS in your turret, though. Oh, Ibre locked down. Zelibur's gonna be able to force him away along with the help of Cross JJ. Walks a little bit too far on. He's gonna, gonna be punished for it right there. Hydraxy and Silent J putting a lot of pressure down onto William Brasky. Don't exactly find a kill, but they do start pressuring him pretty heavily. And Vladimir is going to be going back in the top lane, so now it says one oh, all by herself with three members. Yeah, and here comes Yuru. He's on the sidelines looking for something. But the teleport just completed by William Brasky. Now, the thing is, they have two members. They have the AD carry and support duo in the bottom lane. So they can easily pressure the dragon knowing that they have the advantage in numbers. They can't really do it right now because, oh man, Atkins. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. The poison is going to be taken. First Blood, though, still going over to Yururu. He's still sticking with the still sticking with the um, tradition of taking all the kills as the jungler. <laughs> well, Rengar is certainly the champion to do that on if you're going to do that as a jungler. So, uh, Especially we see him going for the challenging smite as well. It's definitely going to be a combat Rengar in this game. So fantastic to have the first blood on that champion accelerate that damage build so he can snowball out of control into this game and uh, as i was saying before with your duo being in the bottom lane they can actually pressure a dragon fairly early since they have the advantage in numbers they are put on a timer if if zelibus and cross jj take that top lane tower they can rotate bottom lane and they've lost their time to do it so they need to make the decision if they want to do it and if they don't they kind of have to make this 2v1 worth otherwise oh man even going in very far he wants this kill the heal just used by zelibris and the ignite not gonna be healing up fully Oh man, Agrius, a lot of damage from those Twin Fangs from Brosef. Has the tier as well, that's going to be stacking up. And Agrius, respecting the um, Caitlyn pick. Oh man, Hydraxy knocked up by the Arctic Assault. Going to be slowed down as well. The Heal Plague, going to be taking me on the top lane, Ibane. We're not going to even see the rest of that fight in the bottom. He's just going to show me Ibane farming. <laughs> Yeah, well, we may certainly going to have to back now as he was out of mana and flash charges. So uh, we'll see uh, how quickly he can even get back to lane as his teleport is down. So that might mean that's the top lane uh, outer turret going down if they choose to fight for it. But it looks like they're actually both going to go back. Yeah, he does have Ninja Tabby right now. So, see, I think that's a mistake. Take You're supposed to, in the 2v1, you're supposed to get a clear advantage over the enemy AD carry and then swap back. But... Instead, they're going to continue the 2v1, giving Hydraxy a lot more opportunities to get ahead of Zelibris. Right now, the CS lead is in favor of this vein. She does have uh, the Cutlass, while Hydraxy only has the BF sword. But with Yururu here as well, they might be looking to pressure the dragon. And actually, no, the lane swap, they just walked back. They're not going to even take the tower. They're just going to 
take what they did. Ibne forced to take Ninja Tabbies, and that's not going to help him at all against William Brasky. So it worked out in their favor. But look at that damage cut off from Ibne out dueling the Vladimir right now. Also, the Shadow is going to be up very soon. So once that comes up, Ibne wants to go for the fight. Yeah, trying to bait him back out of position. There's a lot of minion damage that came through in that wave as uh, There it is! Also, the Shadow's going to be the Ignite is not available. Sanguine Pool will allow William Brasky to survive for the time being. Yeah, meanwhile. Well, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we see that Rengar waiting in that bush. Full yeah. Sacks ready. They, did take, they did take the first tier tower. And there's Cross JJ going in with the war. They find the lockdown. And a Condemn will be knocking your ruin as well as a solo for, for the damage he's there. Cross JJ, he's going in very far. He's not going to be able to escape. Here comes the teleport coming out for William Brassy. Hydraxy gets to go with the Silent J. Hydraxy still alive. The heal just being used as well. What? The Ace of the Hole has been stopped, but it's going to be a double kill over to this Kaelin Hydraxy. Barely surviving. Beautiful channel on the queue from Caitlyn to get Vladimir as soon as he gets out of the pool and prevent any spells from landing on her. One more spell would have been her death there, so beautiful timing on that. Yeah, that was a two for one right there, and they sh two for zero actually, and they'll be able to get this dragon as well. Thurston, he may be going for the kill. There's the crystal prison, but I don't think, I don't know what he's thinking right there. Maybe looking to get the dragon with the ultimate. But that's yeah, three with five members there. Not gonna try and risk uh, the cheeky steal, even yeah. though. Uh, he did have the flash available. That is going to be three kills going over to Microsoft One. Was that first blood? I don't think it was. No, first blood was earlier. Yeah. On the Rengar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. Yeah, it looks like that uh, Vayne and Leona are going to be able to shove a large wave in the turret here. We'll see if they'll be able to take it. I'm not quite sure there's a lot of help remaining on that turret. Uh, but it is cascading down. Vayne left alone with uh, the Cutlass. Will do quite a bit of damage. Shanna's going to get there in time for the shield, though. Yeah, they'll not be able to take it down. It's a little bit under half health. But at this point, Kaelin, with the components of the Infinity Edge, it's not completed just yet. She's able to out-duel the Vayne, especially with Silent J being there for the quick um, disengage with Monsoon. There's really little hope of them trying to fight them, especially with the pink ward. The invisibility of Zelda is not going to be helping in with the duels. Yeah, absolutely. Cassiopeia also hanging on to her pink ward should uh, these team fights break out and it become necessary with that Vayne ulting in and getting that invisibility temporarily. Definitely not going to let her sneak up on anybody critical. And they're actually roaming to the mid lane, so they're going to be looking to take this mid lane tower down. Agrius going to have a tough time keeping it alive. The roam just coming out from across JJ as well as William Brasky to defend this. They're just going to leave Zelibus in that bottom lane to try and uh, push that lane out. But William Brasky taking a lot of damage from... So much damage coming out. Yeah. Yeah, so much damage coming out, not just from the Cassiopeia, but with that Caitlyn as well, with the Janus shield on her, that bonus AD just chunking out Vladimir so heavily. Yeah, um, you tried to get um, a pick down onto Zelibris, but he was spotted out by Ward, so he backs him. Yeah, Ibne does not have the teleport to join the fight, so he is committed in the top lane to the split push and might be able to get that top lane turret for it as... Uh, it is full health, but he does have quite the minion wave with him, so we'll see what he's able to pull off here. It doesn't look like there's people rotating too quickly to respond. Yeah, he should be able to get that uncontested. Putting his team, getting his team a nice bit of extra gold. There's the Rome. Nope, not going to be able to take it. Not enough damage just yet. And... He has Unfortunately, a without that sheen, he's not able to get those yeah. uh, extra damage procs. Yeah, he has the Ruby Crystal, so I think he's getting a Spectre's Cowl. Maybe it's his first item. Um, that or a Phage, maybe. Goes for the Trinity Force. Goes yeah, in. Perhaps leaving himself a little bit of flexibility here, resting on that Ruby Crystal. 
determine how the game goes here. Yeah. Um, charge just used, but William Brasky has enough sustain at this point that they're not going to be able to... Well, he's not going to be able to fight him unless he goes all in. He is low on mana, so that will be fairly unlikely for the time being. And it looks like we're about to see that blue buff donated over here to Cassiopeia. Yeah, and Agrius having a tough time in this lane. Just the one pilt over puts Agrius down to half health. Yeah, jeez. So we see uh, Cassiopeia opting to finish the uh, Archangel staff before completed, only at 275 stacks on now. Still a long way to go before that transformation. Uh, but with this blue buff, she will be able to stand those cells out a little bit quicker and start to get those stacks ramping up a little bit more quickly here so mm -hmm. she can come online for these mid-game team fights. Yeah, Blade of the Rune King just completed by Zelibris right now. Um, Hydroxy has yet to go back and finish the Infinity Edge. Dragon being up in 1 minute and 30 seconds, both the teams um, will most likely go back very shortly and prepare themselves for uh, the next upcoming fight that will occur around the objective. Yeah, oh man, first up playing really aggressively. Um, they don't want to go in onto the Cassiopeia just yet, but they, he's got to be careful. If they go in, it'll be fairly devastating. Hydroxy, not gone back yes, just yet. Certainly being very aggressive as both of trying to throw that poison out there and say, hey, you know, if you want to actually try and contest this uh, siege line, you're going to have to give me extra stacks on my passive and not willing to do that. <laughs> yeah. Drag it up. Um, drag it up in 40 seconds and there's Ebnite going in onto William Brasky. Devastating charge, not doing too much damage and actually that might just be Ebnite getting forced away. Has the components of the Sheen, so it looks as though he just wanted the extra health from Ruby Crystal. And they don't get too much damage onto Cross JJ. He doesn't want to go in just yet. I do want to take a moment to point out as well, both those tele teleport summoners all are available in the top lane, so should a fight break out, we should expect to see both of them appearing here momentarily. The thing is, Ibane is going to want to most likely go back and teleport in with the home guards buff so he'll just get a huge burst of damage onto uh one person when he comes out that's the most optimal um play right there william braski doesn't really have any way of stopping the teleport if it does come out from even so what could end up happening is even actually waits for william to start the teleport cancels it and then channels his own teleport Knowing full well that Vladimir can't stop it. But there's a fight going down. Also, the shadow's just gonna be used right there. Not gonna gain too much distance. And that's gonna be William Brasky finding the 1v1 kill onto Ebene. Man, that is not something you see very often. Yeah, unfortunately, that Onslaught of Shadows, like you said, he used more for combat rather than distance, and he's gonna pay for it with the Oh man, Yuru going in, Celebrates has the wall go down onto him, but he's gonna get stunned up by both the Cassiopeia and the Kaelin, and they will not be able to get this kill onto Yuru. What a turner on a one for one. They lost one in the top lane, but they find one in the mid lane, and they should be able to take this mid lane tower as well. Here comes the Thirstman across JJ. Maybe keep it alive, but there is the Earth Assault. They cannot do it. They don't have the wave clear to. Yeah, unfortunately, Rengar taken so low during that last trade that he's going to have to head on back before they can start up the dragon securely here. And it looks like actually this mid lane turret is actually going to be defended here. Yeah, it's, man, they, they, oh man, there's Cassiopeia. He, she hits the next part of her oh, passive. Coming more and more online as we get deeper into this game, Cassiopeia is going to become a nightmare uh, for this Capital One blue team yeah. on the blue side. So far, neither of the teams have really uh, decided to go for the dragon just yet. Ibne has the sheet in his inventory, but he cannot fight William Brasky. Forced away by this Vladimir. That is the power of Vladimir. Component, he has the Will of the Ancients and Seeker's Arm Guard in his inventory right now. So yeah, with all that AP and spell vamp, you are not going to oh, be able to trade effectively well, with him. Well, Silent J has a Majaius. 
Well, here it goes. Well, this is the traditional Janna build we see. If you're in a Janna game where you feel like you're gonna do good, grab that, grab that Medjai's and just let it stack, because you will never die as the queen of disengage. This so is we'll see how much that pays off for him here. Yeah. So far, um, he's still been fairly passive. No, for no unneeded aggression from either of them. Each of them are. Carefully planning out what they want to do with poke and whatnot. They don't want to be put in a precarious situation that forces them away from the next objective. That is the dragon. And Rengar coming right up bottom lane. Might pop on the hunt here to try and scout out. Actually, you're not going to. Just going to get his stacks up off those minions. And they're making, their, for the they're making their way to this dragon right now. And they actually started. Vayne, Zelibus was going back previously, but they don't stop it. They they just let this happen. They had a t they had a ward on it, but they weren't they prepared. They will get the timer off of that dragon, but you're going to choose not to contest this one. That Rengar, a uh, little bit too scary. 1, 0, and 3 going glass cannon right now. Jumping into that might be ill-advised at this point, especially with the Caitlyn in tow, who's doing quite well herself. Again, as we mentioned earlier, with that Infinity Edge and Boots completed. Yeah, Yuru be quite has scary. The, yeah, Yuru has the um, Hydra in his inventory right now, so he's really going to be showing Dio Diesel. Hey man, hope you're watching this game, because this is how you do it. You don't go Trailblazer, you upgrade your jungle item, <laughs> and you get Sweeper. Come on, man. You know, he, he was looking for a gank onto that Vladimir in the top lane, but unfortunately, speaking of Sweepers, he hatched a lord in that tri brush, so Vladimir knew to back away safely there and he's gonna be alright. Man, so much of this, like, a huge part of this game has been centered around taking that mid lane tower, and it's finally down. Let's see what they do. William Brassy, Ignite down onto him, Sanguine Fluid just popped as well. There's the onslaught of shadows. Can he get away? Yuru taking up this tower, and no, he's gonna be able, not gonna be able to survive. William Brasky going one for one. Yuru, unfortunately, the casualty of that fight right there. Yeah, unfortunately for Yuru, isn't he? Backing out of that fight a little bit earlier, Rengar, absolutely no hesitation running straight under that turret and did get the kill onto William Bradley, but did end up paying for it with his life. That uh, ultimate from uh, Vladimir, the Hemo like ramping up that damage so much that he's certainly not able to get out of there with his life. I think, I think that's just a, a mistake in communication right there. One said, let's get out, one said, let's get in, and they just followed what they said. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. The pink board going to be spotted out here in the river as the blue side uh, tries to group up here. And they're just letting Cassie be a roam free to the bottom lane. They're, that's, she's going to be roaming up really easy. And now, while when Microsoft One was pressuring Capital One's mid lane, and they were running a, a decent defense, now it's on the other the shoes on the other foot, Cowed on Blue wants yeah. to take Microsoft mid lane tower. And you know, I want you to toggle the vision right now between Capital One Blue and Microsoft One. Half of the map has lit up for either side right now. Actually, some wards now are being thrown down in the top side as well to get a little bit more vision up there. But both sides have essentially either the top or bottom half of the half of the map to move through. Uh, rather than the normal line of scrimmage being the river, so a very interesting uh, setup here for which side can get ganks and which or picks in which area. So we'll see if uh, the junglers uh, respectively try and capitalize on that vision again. Yeah, so far, there's the zone is completed by William Brasky, so it's going to be a bit harder to take him out of action. And with the need to see large rod in Brosef's inventory, I kind of feel though as, as though he's going to be picking up uh, the Ludic Echo right now. Depending. He hasn't really been getting focused down in fights, but then again, there haven't been a lot of fights. 
Yeah, you know, we'll see exactly which way she decides to go. I feel like she's uh, probably leaning towards the echo herself as well. With that, uh, Sarah's now fully completed. She's fully online and she's looking to become a nightmare in these upcoming team fights. So an echo would just exacerbate that situation. And I think that's probably going to be the pickup here. But uh, in case that there's a little bit of focus, we might see her going to something more defensive, perhaps like a zone. But uh, we'll see how this works out. As she is sneaking in in the top of the brush right here, perhaps waiting for a counter. Yeah, definitely. William Brasky gonna have a tough time keeping this tower alive. That's just three hits. And they're gonna go for the engage. William Brasky, a lot of damage. He like, has just been popped right there. Can he get the kill? That's the monsoon keeping everyone alive for the time being. There's the Zanyas and William Brasky. Wild Gold keeping him alive. He gets this kill. No, it's actually Agrius taking a pro step. Finally takes down the Vladimir and he gets a double kill for all of his troubles. Meanwhile. A double kill on to Agrius, evening the kills up, and there's Evene, and they're spent in the bottom lane, meeting each other, both four-legged beasts, except one's a majestic unicorn, the other one's a, la <laughs> a lady on a pig. <laughs> Fantastic patience as well from Brosis on the Cassiopeia to wait throughout that engagement, hold that ultimate, know that uh, Vladimir's pool was available know that he was so low when coming out of the pool that the ultimate was not needed wait until the second person shows up and she got the ultimate off full stun onto that target so she was able to just twin fangs down from full health that she can get the double kill for her team great experience yeah oh man ebay it doesn't look as though he's able to fight the sejuani right now he is trying to run away the rest of the rest of Thurston's team is there to back him up, but forces the onslaught of shadows out of Ebene. And with Dragon being up in 20 seconds, they could end up taking control of this area and maybe even getting the first dragon for themselves. Yeah, a very critical ultimate to be down during what will be a contested dragon here, judging by the position of the both teams. Yeah, they are all spotted in a ward. Brosef does have Petrifying Glaze available, so that hits a majority of the members, it could uh, make up for the fact that they don't have Onslaught of Shadows available. There's, there's the Miasma, just gonna be used uh, to zone them away, and this may just be them giving up the Dragon Ibrae, looking they're to go in. The folk is there. Yeah, they're all grouped in the pit, but they're not gonna go for the fight. Yeah, Rengar shoving up the mid lane right now, they're actually gonna opt to just trade that. They're so grouped still though, that there's huge potential you got to think if that Rengar ultimate were available, he would have uh, turned down the onslaught yeah. into that grouping. And they're trying to go in. There's Brosef on the sidelines. He's looking for something, but they're going to be finding William Brasky. There's Yeru. He's going in onto Zelleris, but he's not able to find the kill. That's cross JJ finding the kill. Onto Yeruru so far. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, Brosef going absolutely insane. Getting those twin fangs down. He's going to be able to get a double kill. Gets a triple kill, but he's going to be taken down again by Agrius. But that's a nice pistol for Peacemaker finding the fourth kill of the fight. William Brasky able to survive, but his team is already dead. That was a four for two in favor of Microsoft One. And they're going to be pushing down the mid lane and most likely taking this inhibitor tower. Yeah, this inhibitor might actually go down as well. It was a beautiful play when the Rengar jumped in from both Sejuani and Leona to try and lock him down and prevent him from destroying the targets he was going after. But unfortunately, there's just too many targets on this red side, leaving that Cassiopeia and that Caitlyn to do so much damage, focusing all their CC on Rengar. There's just too many targets you need to CC at this point. Yeah, it's just... You have to, like... It's really difficult in terms of choices for Agrius. Like, you want to save the vein, but then, even if you do, you have the Cassiopeia breathing down your neck. You have Yeru breathing down your neck. It's so difficult to keep her alive, and it seems as though Thurston is more a lot, is re he's, he's just leaving his team to engage the fight and trying to disrupt the back line, when in, act in reality, they need to just Focus all the resources except the Vladimir in keep on keeping the vein alive. I just want to make a note as well of those lane wards down the lane that have super. Oh man, Yuru going top. in! Three oh my shots. god, the vein! He got he, three shots! Wow. Three shot the vein right there, man! 
Start up with those Qs ready to double shot those Qs and then just get one final auto to finish her off. Poor Vayne, no time to react to that. That is the power of a glass cannon Rengar. Yeah, man. And they're going to be able to push that bottom lane. They have to deal with the Suzanne's coming in from the mid lane. And Ibane is there as well to provide a bit more of annoyance. Of an annoyance. William Brasky, Cross JJ, and Thurston are all there. They maybe can go for an engage. Hydraxy not going to be able to assist this team immediately. The rotation coming out from Microsoft One. I think they painted the dragon. I'm barren. They could go for it. Well, the Super Minions are pushing pretty far into the base they're dealing with. Um, they have so much vision. Again, looking over just to their vision, they have absolute total, total control. So they will know if they come to contest this Baron. Yeah, they will able to know that they're nowhere in the vicinity. Yeah, they could have. Vayne just didn't even have enough uh, distance to even put down the triangle. And this is going to be a fight, Ibne. They're actually going to disengage as well. All sorts of shadows used to back away instead of engage. Wow, oh, miscommunication right there. And William Brasky is the right hanging on with the Zion. Petrifying Glaze, they'll still use the Hydrax. He gets the kill on William Brasky. He moves in the back line, causing so much havoc. And he's still able to live with the lifesteal of the Hydra. And this is going to be Hydrax off Hydrax. He finally finishing off the kill onto Sejuani, he picks up a double, and it's gonna be a full ace. This could just be the game. 20 second death timers are there. Ibne is already into the enemy base. The super minions are there. They have the band buff. GG's are coming out. And this might just be Microsoft One have yet to lose a game this season. Wow, what an insane team. Absolutely dominating games here. You know that. And that final fight as well, that says Wani Ultimate being thrown out, thinking they had a little bit more time on the Baron, but they just rushed it down so immediately. It really shows the clean, crisp team coordination this Microsoft One team has and why they've been undefeated, because they make calls and they go with them and they stay together and they get things done so quickly. The other teams just don't have time to react. And then you see games that are just so dominant, ending at 30 minutes here, 7 to 17 in kills absolutely clinic show uh put on for display here by this microsoft one team yeah so it is going to be a microsoft one versus amazon prime two years in a row finals in this after hour gaming league tournament this is going to be pretty fun to watch for you guys hope you guys join us for that in two weeks yeah, absolutely. Be sure to tune into AfterHoursGaming.tv. All of the uh, information for those upcoming for that last upcoming finals match will be available on that website. So definitely stay tuned for that. Again, as Desi mentioned, it will be a rematch from last year. Who will come out ahead? Will Microsoft One continue their onslaught undefeated, or will they have their streak broken? We'll find out in two weeks.